Is it? Yeah. OK. Now it's working. Hello, everyone. I'm back on stage with a slightly different topic. Um, if you followed my presentation earlier, uh, I've already mentioned a couple of, uh, of the tools. And I think I need to say something else before the slides are going to appear. Um, but um, as a, as a um, yes, as a um, disclaimer, so I've put up together a small list of tools that are useful for day-to-day -day monitoring, day-to-day, -day, um, like for checking if you've made any mistakes in BGP. Um, I might have left out something that you maybe use every day, and I would be happy to to get to hear about it. Maybe you can come to the microphone at the end and, uh, and mention if there's any tool I left out, anything that you think would be interesting to, to add to this presentation. So maybe we can, uh, we can maybe make it a, in long term, a more crowdsourced uh, presentation about uh, what's available there. Um, I think I will skip. I think this doesn't work. Ah, there we go. OK, I will skip the part where, uh, who am I? Yeah, I can see them here. I can see everything here. Um, um, again, if you want to know why I'm the owner of the Zanuck Discuss Telegram group, feel free to approach me. It can be a very nice uh, discussion starter for, for the breaks. But let's get directly into it. Why do you want to monitor things? You want to monitor because you want to understand what's happening around you. It's not only you, it's also how other networks um, watch uh, or reach your network. Um, now, let's see. There aren't that many people in the room. So let's see. Can you raise your hand if you've, if you've used a looking glass in the last month or so? Wow, that's a very good number. OK. so. I left out looking glasses from this presentation because I gave them for granted, and that was a good choice. So you want to monitor the correctness of BGP. You want to monitor how your networks are seen by others. You can do it manually. You can use a looking glass, and many of you do. But then what if you had something that could do it for you and, uh, and send alerts, tell you that there is something going on, tell you that there is something um, to improve. So, um, for example, I, I discovered recently that uh, we forgot to turn off an announcement for one of my prefixes in, in a special location. And I wasn't sure about that. So monitoring really helps in, uh, in all this. Um, so before we start with going deep into BGP, I would take a step back. How are your uh, route and route six objects? And for that, there is IRR Explorer. So how many of you have heard about IRR Explorer before? That's way less than people who have used looking glasses in the last month or so. That's good. So IRR Explorer gives you an insight into, um, so you have your AS number or you have a prefix. How does it look like in the IRR? but not only in your regional registries IRR, but anywhere in the world. So um, you can see also in which AS sets your ASN is in. And it's useful to, to also figure out if you forgot to, to update that. Um, you might have, um, there, is a, there is a related work that I've done uh, in the last couple of years, how many uh, networks have objects in different databases for the same network. So imagine if I look into RADB and I see network uh, ABCD has an origin of, I don't know, a certain AS number, and then I look into the Afrinic database and I have a different origin for, for the same network. Which one do I trust? Which one should I look at? And IRR Explorer helps you look at this data, see this is my uh, report for my AS number, and it tells me that everything is okay except for there is a um, there is a, uh, a prefix that where 
supposed to be originated by another network, 14, 30, 83, um, anyway. And that is uh, not uh, good right now. Uh, that is actually fine. It was a prefix that, that I delegated to, to another uh, organization, and, um, and that is good. I know, I know that's uh, legitimate. But imagine you, you look at this and you have a situation where you, you discover that some of your prefixes don't have the correct uh, route or route six objects. That's the, that could be a potential uh, issue in the long run. Yeah, being included in, in different AS sets is also an issue in the long run. You see that here there's, a, there's an overview. Um, for example, my ASN is part of an AS set in APNIC. That's the ISOC Lab AS set um, because I used to run that. Um, in RADB, I'm part of the Hurricane Electric AS set. And who, who is not part of that AS set? But then in RIPE, I'm, I'm part of uh, different AS sets for the different exchanges where I uh, appear with my, with my ASN and, uh, and for different other organizations. So, um, IRR Explorer, I would consider it the, the entry point where you, you start looking at how is your health regarding um, 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 route objects, but uh, what your routing should, should look like if everything was done properly. Then the next step would be to use BGP Alerter. BGP Alerter is a tool for monitoring BGP and RPKI, so both of them in one go. It's, uh, it's open source. Uh, you can find it on GitHub. So whenever something goes wrong, uh, you also know about it before others do. Um, there are, um, there's a lot that the BGP Alerter does. And as I said, it's very easy to install and run. When you, you just do a wget, you get uh, the, the executable, so like me. So, um, where does BGP Alerter get most of its data? There's RIPRIS. RIPRIS is a global network run by the RIPEN CC uh, of route collectors. There's about 25 of them, uh, different parts of the world, different exchanges, different colocation facilities. Um, some of them accept uh, multi-hop uh, BGP sessions. Some others are just tied to the local exchange. Um, you can request to set up a BGP session with it, with it, so you can see then directly what you're announcing to them. Um, data is available to everyone for free. So you can get an MRT dump, you can get uh, live data, that's what BGP Alerter uses, and you can find more information at risk.ripe.net. Keep in mind, if you go and ask for um, peering, they might deny that because at the moment they're trying to figure out, they're trying to, to uh, get to uh, understand more of what, the, what to do with their data. They collect a lot of data and adding peers in, uh, in certain locations sometimes doesn't add a value to, to the data um, because they already, already have too much. So don't feel offended in that case. But um, you can use it as risk live. If you um, followed my presentation earlier today, um, the, the system I used was RIS Live for figuring out if, my, if uh, uh, the announcements for my prefix changed over time when I changed my ROAS. RIS Live is very useful. You, have, um, you, have, uh, you can subscribe to certain types of messages and you get uh, data that is already uh, pre-chewed for you, so the next stop, the, the prefixes included in the message and everything, and then you also get the BGP message encoded in it. And why did I, why did I just mention this? Because the limitations of RIS Live is that uh, since they try to keep the messages smaller and short, because they send you a lot of them, um, they decided to just not implement uh, our, uh, certain functionalities so far. So you will find out that, for example, uh, in the plain message you, you get, you don't get large communities. Um, if you want to, f uh, to check large communities, you have to look into the BGP, into the BGP message that's uh, attached into, 
into the message uh, you get from RIS. So you will need a parser. You will need to, um, to first look into it. Um, if you want a suggestion, um, and again, if you watched my presentation earlier, I took the effort at one point to, to say, OK, I need to do this, and I'm pretty sure that there are BGP message parsers out there. But I want to spend a couple of days maybe writing my own. And while I did it, I learned a real lot about how BGP works. Uh, I learned a lot more by looking at, by reading the RFCs, following them, um, okay, checking, checking the the data in the uh, in the RFCs, and figuring out how things actually work under the hood. So if you work with BGP day in and, and day out, I would suggest you go and and have a look at implementing maybe a very simple BGP message parser. Um, I can provide a list of RFCs to look at, because then the, the, the search time is, uh, is much lower, and that can help. So who else? Uh, this doesn't work now. OK. So who else uses um, data from RIS Live and the data from, uh, from RIS? Hurricane Electric. Uh, Hurricane Electric has been for years the most well-known source for anything BGP. Um, I remember people quoting it maybe 15 years ago. Um, it, still, it still is a very useful resource. You can find out about anything. Uh, your uh, an ASN's customer cone, its transits, the networks. There is a, a RPKI um, validation state. Uh, the internet exchanges where that, um, that network is supposed to be peering, and so on. Um, um, it's a very valuable resource, um, but there are also alternatives nowadays. And one of them is bgp.tools. Um, bgp.tools, the, the, ima the, the image is good where it is. No, it's good. It was good. So uh, it's the same as Hurricane Electric, um, although never quote me by saying that. Um, the concept is the same, but uh, mo more features are in, the, in near real time. And um, you have, um, you have a, a free tier, and you also can pay to get additional services. So uh, you can get notifications when your routing status changes. You can get other additional services, including a remote uh, looking glass, for example. I've seen people who have uh, moved to having a looking glass run by BGP tools. Um, there are certain niche information you can find on BGP tools. For example, the, the, the vendor of the device connected to a, a, a specific internet exchange, because by looking at the, at the looking glass of the, or by looking at the, at the neighbor, uh, the, so the ARP cache, and looking at the MAC address of the of the device, I care about. Um, I'm not at the level of Rust uh, that I would use BGP Kit directly. Um, there is the good old BGP Stream as well, but it l appears as uh, it is unmaintained. Um, there are issues if you want to install the the Python uh, Py BGP Stream because it doesn't install on recent versions of Python. Um, so um, my experience has been to move at that point to, to BGP Kit for that reason. Um, then one, a few last words. Um, monitor everything. Monitor as much as you can. Um, if you don't see something happening, you cannot act. You cannot do anything if you don't know there's an issue. And the more we all monitor, the more we will understand about where the issues are. Um, people tell me there is, uh, well, BGP has been there for a long time, and everything's fine. There are other things that we still haven't figured out completely. Um, one particular function of BGP Alerter, for example, is to also monitor the RPKI trust anchors. Those are the repositories where you fetch all your data for RPKI. If one of them goes offline, 
um, it's not a big deal. The, um, all the, the, the prefixes covered by ROAS in that uh, database, in that uh, RIR, they will become uh, un not found in uh, ROA validation. But that might have an impact uh, on your routing because you, uh, you send a bunch of BGP updates all in, in one go. And, uh, and that might show up in your other monitoring systems where the load on your routers goes up and, and you have other issues. So um, that having something that also monitors the source of your data can have good implications for you to understand what's happening in the rest of your network. Um, one recommendation that I put as last is manage your notifications. Um, too many notifications is like none. If you have to dig through what you got to figure out what's happening, then there is a problem somewhere. So make sure you, you, um, you, you figure out how to reduce the number of notifications to the one you care about, the ones you care about, and, um, and then make sure you read them, because then you understand what's happening in your network. And I'm open to questions with this now. I see no questions. Yes, either everyone is bored or being after lunch, uh, you're all still digesting. Well, no question. Thank Thanks, you. Max.